Good morning YouTubes. It's been a while since I put a video out so I thought I'd do a quick one on this job we're doing at the moment which is a compressor change on a, a VRV4 or 5. Um, it's the master condenser which is the 16 on this system here so master and slave. Um, we've recently changed the compressor in the slave um, and when we changed that compressor we also found that the uh, compressor number two which is the right hand compressor on the master was also coded out so we're going to change that as well so I'll just take you quickly through how we're doing this so rather than use a reclaim unit we know the gas is good uh, reclaim bottle we know the gas is good so what we've done we've put the system into recovery mode which when you do that whether you can see that T01 it's probably flashing but it isn't actually it's just the way the LEDs appear on the camera if you go on to your Dakin app and go to VRV recovery mode it'll tell you how to do that but I think it's code 21 which gets you into recovery mode and all that does it opens all the valves up inside the condenser and all the valves on the indoor units BS boxes so you've basically got one complete circuit there's nothing stopping anything from coming in or going out so the way we do this is we shut off the three ports on the condenser you're working on so you're now closed to the condenser and then we're drawing out the gas from the condenser via that internal port there in through your gauge out the gauge into the reclaim unit out of the reclaim unit and then back into the live side of the system so these three ports here are still open so we're pumping gas into the condenser and into the field pipe work just to keep the gas in the system there's no need to use a reclaim bottle I wouldn't recommend you to doing this method if you don't know the state of the gas I would say um, always reclaim especially because you don't know until you got the gas out whether it was short which could have been the reason for the compressor to fail but on this case that's not the way um, we know the gas is good we know the system is tight it's been pressure tested on the last compressor change and we know the charge is correct as well so this way it also means that when we do uh, unbrazen and place the compressor the commission inside of it will remain within the condenser so we'll be vacuuming out the condenser alone and uh, only pressure testing the condenser so we haven't got to waste all the nitrogen when we're pressure testing the rest of the system when we're vacuuming out we can do it a lot quicker because we're only vacuuming out one condenser and um, it just speeds up the process so generally this will probably take depends on your reclaim unit it's a fairly good reclaim unit but this should probably be able to be done in a day or two um, but looking at the way the system is and the condenser is that's the compressor we're changing in there now we've measured it up it's going to be a bit of a pig to get it out but this gap here between the coil side and the compressor number two when you push these pipes out of the way, unbraze them, get them out of the way, it should slide out of this gap here without too many problems. There is a, a carrying hook on the top of the condenser should you need one to lift it. Um, so I'm hoping it's just going to come out fairly easy. I think I've done one of these before and I don't remember it being that much of a problem. So initially when you look at it, you might think, oh, I've got to get this coil out of the way, but you can't. This coil's a wraparound coil. Don't waste your time. It does come out of that gap. Um, so we're down now to uh, about 20, 20 psi we're down to now so we're on vapor so we shouldn't be long maybe an hour to get all the gas back in to the uh, live side of the circuit and then we'll have a crack at unbrazing the compressor we're also changing the inverter board because um, both of these compressors in this system and on this side are inverter driven so as a precaution we're also changing the inverter board which is somewhere I don't know where in the box over there and um, yeah fingers crossed it all goes okay as far as compressors are concerned compressor, compressor one and compressor two are the, are the same so you don't have to worry too much about that but when you do change the inverter you need to make sure that the inverter you're getting is the correct inverter the inverters are different 
although the compressors are the same the inverters are different um, to compressor one and compressor two so just bear that in mind when you're ordering your your compressors ensure you order the correct inverter because that'll be a showstopper uh, stay tuned and I'll keep you updated as this goes okay that's your top panel off which will expose all your circuit boards and you see there there's your two inverter boards so to get to those you've got to take this plate here off which is connected to this um, it's a hot gas pipe which is there to keep the heat within uh, the control board area stop any condensation forming um, during the winter months so you may have seen this on previous videos when I've done these before they do literally come away and they just fall down on this set of pipes here so it's not looking at it, it looks a bit tricky but it's not once you've got um, this plate out then uh, you've got access or full access to the, the two inverter boards um, I'm not sure which one it is but I'm going to assume that it's the one on the right but we'll check that once we start pulling everything apart we won't do it now though because the system's live we don't want to be pulling things apart just yet and the reason we're keeping it live is because all the the valves are open in recovery mode I think if you power the system down some of the valves might shut so we're not going to do that I want to keep the system live while recovering once we recover the gas then we'll crack on with pulling things apart once everything's dead and tested dead um, this isn't a DIY job for anyone so I wouldn't recommend doing it or attempting to do it if you've got no skill in HVAC uh, leave it to the professionals because these are three phase condensers so if you if you work on these live um, I wouldn't recommend it but uh, yeah three phase there's not a lot of them um, you don't get a lot of chances with three phase so just bear that in mind once the system's recovered and we're happy this system is completely uh, dead then we'll continue to pull things apart and I'll show you some bits as we're going along with that as well stay tuned So there's your wiring diagram, which is on the inside of the top panel, if you're interested. Um, you see there you've got your two power boards and your two inverter boards connected to the two compressors. Now, although it does say on here compressor one and compressor two, um, the key doesn't indicate whether it's on the left or the right hand side. So the easiest way to determine which board you're changing would be just to follow the cable back so the cable that comes off the inverter board back to the compressor that's when you're going to change and that's the one you need to make sure you've got the right one because you can see from this drawing although they look similar there are some differences so AS6P is missing on this one the banker plugs there are missing so you can see they're not the same so it's very important you ensure you've got the right compressor uh, sorry, the, the right inverter board for the compressor you're changing. The compressors are identical. Okay, just a, a quick point to note, it's going to be tricky getting the bolts out from the compressor because there's only three. You can see the two there, uh, one and two, but the third one is um, at the back of the compressor. So to get to that, I would recommend using uh, an extension bar on a 12 mil socket. It looks like a 13, but it's not. It's a 12, and uh, you don't want to round these bolts off because you don't get new bolts with the compressor. So you've got to use the old bolts, and you've got to use the um, old rubber mounts as well. So just make sure you use a 12 as opposed to a 13 um, on your uh, on your socket. Okay, you can see now. We're almost down to zero. We're literally just sucking vapor now. So what we tend to do on a situation like this is once it gets down to zero, um, pump down your reclaim unit, shut all the gauges off, and but leave your gauge attached and just watch it because these valves, um, although it's a fairly new condenser, they can they can um, let by. Although we've done them up fairly tight, just watch the gauge pressure. Um, to see if there's any gas getting back in you'll see it fairly straight away but um, yeah just keep an eye on that don't go breaking into the system if you've got um, 
leaky by, le leaky uh, uh, valves, that's when you're going to have to actually start re thinking about reclaiming the whole system. I'm fairly confident these are going to be okay, but it's just a point to note, don't break into the system until you're 100% sure that the gauges aren't rising because the, the uh, service ports are letting by. Okay, so we've been checked all the gauges and uh, after 10 minutes we're happy that these valves are holding. So this condenser that we're working on is now dead, as in there's no gas in it. We're now going to power it down because it doesn't matter if the valves open and close now inside. Um, and we're going to get the compressor out. I'm not going to film that bit because... Uh, I might film a little bit of it, we'll see. Stay tuned. Okay, there's the compressor disconnected. You see we've taken off the crankcase heater, which is here, and disconnected the cables. Take a picture of your cables so you know which way around they go. If not, you can always identify it on the other compressor, but they are labelled up and it is on the wiring diagram, but for ease, just take pictures as you're going around doing this. Just so it just speeds up the process, having to double check things, you know where they go back. Um, you've got one sensor here on discharge pipe to remove, uh, one crankcase heater and the, uh, the mains cables going to the compressor. And that's it. Just a point to note when you are removing cables, um, just give it 10 minutes after turning the power off because uh, the capacitors inside will need a bit of time to discharge. Um, although the power's dead, they will hold a charge and give you a belt um, if you're not careful. Okay. Okay, there you can see we've got the top and uh, the bottom suction and discharge off the compressor. We've loosened the bolts off as well, so we know they're going to come out okay. Um, just bear in mind when you're doing a compressor change you do get a bit of boil off and maybe a bit of oil splatter but it's not a big deal on this one it was actually okay um, and yeah this is going to be a tough one to get out because it's attached to the ref net so you've got a really good it needs two people basically don't try and do it on your own you need one bloke pulling up and one on the braze uh, or woman whoever's doing the job and um, yeah so one of you unbrazing it will got to give it a proper yank to get it up but it does go eventually and now we're going to do the reverse we're going to get the compressor out and um, put the new one in okay just to show you look the compressor is out and it does fit nicely through that gap so don't worry about it a little bit of gas still boiling off there through the oil but we're not bothered about that um, yes yeah, so just uh, yeah, don't worry just, it's literally just sort of unbalances itself and sort of rolls itself through that little gap it's quite straightforward um, using the uh, the carrying eye at the top of the compressor okay so that's the the new compressor in we're just doing the bolts up now uh, getting it in it's just as difficult as getting it out which wasn't that difficult to be fair three bolts will go in place and then we'll braze the pipes back in and then we'll stick it on vac and while it's on vac we'll do the inverter PCB so just to recap power wise power is off now so we can tinker around with this all we like two people for a job this size or a compressor this size it is you have to have two people I don't know how you get that top suction pipe out without two people so always have two people um, there's no tools involved with this outside of your standard HVAC tools um, how you unbraze it whether you use an oxy set or a mat gas a double barrel mat gas is probably preferred if you're going to use a mat gas I don't think you get it off with a single um, and a long series uh, 12 mil socket wrench to get the nut off the back of the compressor but that should be standard in most tool, tool, uh, tool kits anyway. So uh, yeah, let's get this brazed in. Okay, that's the compressor now in and brazed up. So we've got the system on vac. Obviously we're only vacuuming out the condenser. We're not vacuuming out the whole system. So it shouldn't need to vac out for too long. 
So we're going to have a tidy up, get rid of some tools, and then we're going to crack on with the inverter board in uh, replacement of that. So stay tuned. Okay, so when removing this metal plate here, because the inverter's one and two on the back of the plate, to do that we need to do three things. So the first things first is to disconnect your compressor cables from the power PCB. There's a couple of other little plugs that need to be disconnected off each of these. You need to chase these cables here back to the main PCB and disconnect them. Unscrew your heat sink screws and the heat sink will then come away from the PCB plate. Now this whole plate can be removed which has got your inverter boards on it. Um, take pictures as you're doing this just to make sure you put everything back in the right place but other than that it looks difficult but it isn't that difficult so I'm going to remove this plate away from the, the condenser now. Okay so this is now the inverter plate removed from the condenser or tilted over you can see there we've just bent the sink the heat sink out of the way and now you've got the two sets of compressor cables one and two which you can disconnect to now remove it completely away from the condenser because there's two of us we could potentially change this PCB without taking it out completely but we're going to do it anyway just to show you how easy it is okay so that's the inverter plate out there's a couple of extra cables there we had to pull out once we've realized they're in all these ones in the corner they had to be disconnected from another PCB um, but generally speaking with two people it's fairly straightforward you've got one guy holding it as you're slowly pulling it out um, and there's our two inverters and I believe uh, this is the one no this is the one we're changing okay in a minute okay so on these PCBs there is a model number for the two and they are different just make sure that this one is the one we're changing and matches up with the new PCB model number which it does which we've checked you need to then disconnect all the cables off it take plenty of pictures so you know where things are going back you've got four screws one two three four on the front side just lift it up for me Ash and then you've got four more screws on the back side here one two three four which attaches to the heatsink you see this heatsink paste that comes with the PCB when you buy it from Dakin I'm not sure about other manufacturers but you get like a tube of this heatsink paste so just make sure you put that back on before you um, you mount it because the new PCB comes with a new backing plate and it will be dry of heatsink paste so we're going to stick that back in and then uh, we'll show you it all back together okay there we go it's all back in place now just doing the final screws and plugs in just be mindful to put your heat sink on the back of that plate there which comes with the daking kit which is this stuff here little tube didn't used to come with daking PCBs but they do now um, and then we'll be good to go ready to start it up Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, or just like, I'm not bothered whether you subscribe or not, um, and catch me on the next one.